this video, I'm going to share with you why I choose to fish these G Loomis E6X steelhead rods over other brands and models. I have an entire rod rack back there full of steelhead rods, mostly G Loomis. I have some GL2s, a GL3, one of the old G Loomis steelhead series rods I use for drift fishing, two IMX rods, and a float series rod. But when you see me on the river, most of the time you'll see me packing at least these two rods. They're the G Loomis E66, 1143, and 1145. So in this video, I'll go over the specs of these rods. I'll explain why I choose to use them. And I'm also going to weigh some steelhead rods just to show you how light these are compared to other models and manufacturers. So let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Barry Rigger. Welcome to my channel, Rage Fishing. I started fishing G Loomis rods about 25 years ago when I picked up my first GL2 at the local GI Joe's here in Eugene. I still have that rod till this day. It's a GL2, it's a six and a half foot light power fast action. This thing has caught a lot of trout. In fact, it even caught my very first steelhead. It has never broke, it's the original rod, and little did I know that buying this rod would cost me several thousand dollars over the next couple decades. But what this rod taught me is the quality, the sensitivity, the lightweight of G Loomis rods. I've used other rods from other manufacturers and I just think G Loomis has them beat. Now the reason I'm highlighting the E6X models is due to their value. You get G Loomis quality for what I consider to be a fairly reasonable cost. The Gen 2 E6X steelhead rods started about 275 bucks and go up to about 290. They have spinning models, casting models, and a couple float series rods. I know that can still be a lot of money for some people, but what you might do is look on Facebook Marketplace or on Craigslist and you might be able to find one at a much cheaper cost. Now let's go over the features of these rods. To start out with, they have cork handles, which I prefer over synthetics. Over the years, I've tried a couple of different rod manufacturers that have synthetic handles, and I just don't like the way the cold translates into your hand during winter steelhead season. You can see that the cork in the E6X Gen 2s comes completely over the reel seat, which is kind of a nice feature. So they have Fuji guides and reel seat. The actual graphite itself is just kind of a polished, it's not necessarily finished, but they have these green highlights with the G Loomis fish on top and they're pretty nice looking rods. They're very sensitive, they're very lightweight, but they're still very strong. And best of all, they're still made in the United States, Woodland, Washington, and they have a lifetime warranty. So now let's go over the different models starting with the 1143. This is what I consider to be G Loomis's most versatile steelhead rod. It's a nine foot six, medium light power, fast action. It's rated six to 12 pound test. This rod can do it all. I've used it for drift fishing, throwing hardware, but mostly I use it for float fishing, either jigs or beads. I prefer a nine and a half foot rod because I fish small coastal rivers that have a lot of overhanging branches and I just don't like getting my tip hung up in the branches. I like this particular rod so much that I have a backup that's brand new. G Loomis keeps talking that they may discontinue the E6X line. G Loomis, if you're listening, please do not do so. But just in case they do, I have a backup in case I ever break this and they don't have one available. But even if they do discontinue this, let's hope they come out with the GCX, which is what they've replaced some of their bass and trout fishing rods with, because those look like they're pretty good quality as well. So next is the 1145, which is also nine and a half feet, but it's medium heavy power. It's also a fast action and it's rated eight to 17 pound test. So it's a little stouter than the 1143. I bought this rod after Steelhead Road Trip 2022 when David and I got into some bigger steelhead and I wanted a rod that had a little bit more backbone, especially for bead fishing. 
I didn't use it until the steelhead road trip this year, so in 2023. And the first fish I caught with it was just a little guy, like probably a four pounder. But what that little fish taught me is even though this rod is a little stouter than the 1143, it's still a pleasure to fish with even when catching smaller fish. I've since caught some bigger fish with this rod, like that big hen I caught in Steelhead Tales episode one. And I was certainly glad I had a little bit more backbone because she put up quite a fight. So I own one other rod in the E6X series and it's the 1083. I've never used this rod. And I'll explain to you why I bought it. Years ago, I had a GL2 1083, which is the same specs, which is nine foot medium light power. And I use it as like a light drift fishing rod. And for whatever reason, I sold it years ago. I shouldn't have, but I bought it, this rod to replace it, and I just haven't used it. This rod would also work really good for tossing spinners. I also thought it would work really good for fishing really small creeks with float gear if you want to even go shorter than a nine foot six. But I'm looking forward to using this rod at some point, hopefully this year. Another rod that I would consider is the 1024S. Now I have a GL3 with that model number and what it is is an eight foot six medium power fast action. It's rated eight to 12 pound test. I like a shorter rod for spinner and spoon fishing. I'm generally fishing a number four spinner or a one third ounce spoon. And I just like the casting accuracy that that rod gives me. So if I ever break my GL3, I'll probably just replace it with an E6X and the 1024. So one of the most important features to me for a steelhead rod is weight, especially when you're float fishing. And that's why I really love these E6X rods because they're so lightweight. That's why I started fishing these Shimano Vanford reels. They'll save you three ounces over standard models. And the E6X rods will save you up to a couple ounces from other rod manufacturers. So let's go ahead and weigh some steelhead rods. I stole Janina's scale out of the kitchen. She won't miss it because she's not home right now, but it's a digital scale. I've got my Hero 10 filming so you can see what the actual weight is. I have it in pounds and ounces. Let's make sure of that. So you can see it's zeroed across there. All right, so let's start out with the E6X 1143. This is the nine and a half foot medium light. It's gonna be kind of a challenge, these are long rods. So it's not touching anything but the actual scale. So it's coming in 5.2 ounces. So this is the 1145. Let's just see how much heavier that is being the a little bit heavier power rod. So 5.6. So it's only four tenths of an ounce more than the 1143. So that's not bad considering it's a little bit stouter rod. So let's go ahead and weigh my float rod. This is a 10 and a half foot G Lomas float rod. Well, let's see what this Stratic FJ weighs. It's an FJ 9.4 ounces, ouch. Those things are heavy. But because this rod is so much longer, it's actually not a bad thing. 10 and a half foot medium light. 6.4 ounces. Let me make sure it's not touching anything. It's not touching anything. So it's actually settling in at five, or I'm sorry, 6.3 ounces for a 10 and a half foot rod. That's pretty light. So now we'll weigh the G Loomis. This is the IMX 1163. It's a nine foot eight. Not touching anything. 5.1 ounces. Now, now you know why I like fishing with this rod so much. That is light. So let's go ahead and weigh the nine foot E6X. This is the 1083. It's a medium light. Four point six ounces. That is really light. This thing has got. It has to have one of the nicest cork handles that I've seen on one of these. It's just a beauty. So for comparison's sake, let's go ahead and weigh some other rod manufacturers. I'm going to start with the Lama Glass X11. This is Haley's rod. My daughter. She wanted one of these pink X11s. Got a steelhead with it a couple years ago. It's actually on Steelhead Adventures. But this is a nine and a half foot. 
It's a medium power, fast action. There we go. Make sure we're not touching there. Seven point one ounces. So Haley, if you're watching, it's a good thing you've been lifting weights because that's a pretty heavy fishing rod. So for comparison's sake, this to the 1143 E6X, it weighs almost two ounces more. Now to be fair, this is a medium, medium power versus the medium light, so it does have a little bit more backbone in it. I personally think that the weight in these rods that have composite handles like this comes from the handle. I've seen where they say that they're lighter than cork. I don't believe it. Unless the blanks on those E6X rods are just super light, it's, it's the cork that's saving you weight. All right, what else do we have here? Oh, striker. So this is the striker. It's the SH994. It's nine foot nine. So it's a little bit longer than the E6X nine and a half foot rods. Now, this is a medium power. So a little bit heavier power rod. It's a moderate action. Okay, we're not touching anything. It's coming in right at seven ounces. So again, it's a little bit lighter by, a, you know, like a tenth of an ounce than the X11. It is three inches longer though, but I think it's those composite handles. I think they just add a little bit of weight to the rods. So let's go ahead and weigh my other 1143. This is the one that I bought just in case my other one gets broken, stolen, and it gets discontinued, and I want to fish two 1143s in the same day. It's got a brand new Vanford on it. Let's just verify, this should be 6.3 ounces. Right on the money, 6.3 ounces. It's a brand new Vanford 3000. Let's see if there's any variation between the two. Nope, it's exactly the same weight, 5.2 ounces. That's pretty consistent. So now you can probably understand why I enjoy fishing the E6X so much. They're lightweight, especially when you put that Vanford reel on them. I mean, you're saving several ounces over some of the other rod manufacturers. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. Now go out and get yourself an E6X before they discontinue these things. Now I should mention, I'm not sponsored by G Loomis or Shimano. Not that I wouldn't mind to be, but I just like to promote the products that I use and believe in. I'll put the links to these model numbers for G Loomis's website down in the description field. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment field below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out on YouTube. Also, if I earned it, give me a thumbs up. But thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.